Hello everybody! Today we are taking a look at Dune, based on the novel of the same name and directed by Denis Villeneuve. Two houses, Atreides and Harkonnen, are fighting over the desert planet Arrakis, where they mine something called spice. Basically, space cocaine. The story mainly focuses on young Paul Atreides, played by Timothy Chalamet. He is the heir to House Atreides, has been having visions of a young woman in a distant land, and may or may not be the chosen one. Also, there are giant freaking sandworms and people with blue eyes and ornithopters and some huge Jabba the Hutt looking motherfucker. Who can fly for some reason. This is of course not the first attempt at bringing Dune to the big screen. In fact, many years ago, it was done by David Lynch. Possibly not the best choice. Believe it or not, I don't think I had ever actually seen David Lynch's Dune all the way through. I'd only ever seen bits of it, but I did watch it all the way through to prepare for the new movie, and... Oh boy. I think I understand what he was trying to do. And that's really the problem, because what he was trying to do is not what should have been done. This time around, we are trying to bring Dune to the big screen once again with Denis Villeneuve at the helm. He previously directed Blade Runner 2049, which I liked. Based on that, I thought I had a pretty good idea of what to expect going in, and I pretty much got what I expected. Not a whole lot of surprises here, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. What I expected was a good movie, and I got it. The only real surprise was when the title card came up and it said Dune Part 1, because unless I missed it somehow, I do not remember them mentioning in any of the marketing that this was supposed to be a two-parter. I mean, I got the poster right behind me and it just says Dune, although it does say It Begins. Maybe that was a hint? In any case, if you were hoping to see a lot of Zendaya, despite her heavy presence in the trailers, she is in very little of the movie. She doesn't really show up until the very end. But I'm sure we'll see more of her in part two, and it looks like that has been greenlit. And as far as part one goes, if I, for whatever reason, made a sci-fi film, I would absolutely want Villeneuve to direct it because I know it is going to look amazing. All of these alien worlds are just gorgeous to look at. They do an incredible job showing off the landscape and the architecture and the people, and it's all accompanied by Hans Zimmer's incredible score. Great action sequences on land and in the air, and the shields, oh man, they look so much better than they did in David Lynch's movie. If you're not familiar with these shields, people in Dune have these little personal shield generators that will give them some level of protection from physical attacks, although it does not make them invincible. And you've probably seen how this works in the trailer, where they have that, like, brief blue glow whenever they get hit by something. Uh, in the original... How can I describe it? Imagine wearing a transparent suit of Minecraft armor. Technology has come a long way. I was invested in the story, unlike the David Lynch version where I was just invested in the absurdity of it all. It's certainly not perfect. There is a bit of a white savior thing going on, a bit of a colonizer thing going on, although it seems like the writers did at least try to address that. And it does have some minor pacing issues. There were times when it felt a little slow when I'm not necessarily sure this needed to be 2 hours 35. But even when it was moving a little slow, I wasn't bored. I mean, I did go back and watch this a second time, not for this review, just because... I wanted to. I tend not to do that if the movie is boring me. The cast, I thought, did a fantastic job overall. Of course, there's a lot of focus on Chalamet and Rebecca Ferguson, who plays Lady Jessica, as they're the main protagonists, and they were more than up to the task. Stellan Skarsgård as Baron Harkonnen is the kind of villain you just love to hate. It's just slimy and disgusting in more ways than one. Jason Momoa... He was really just playing himself, but he was fun. The one thing I found odd in terms of the cast were the people on Arrakis, as that planet clearly has a lot of Arabic inspiration, and yet not a lot of Arabic casting. Instead, we get people like Zendaya and Javier Bardem, who are talented actors, don't get me wrong, just they seemed a bit out of place. Overall, like I said, I did enjoy the movie, and while they probably could have tightened up the runtime a bit, it was still very well done, and I am looking forward to part two. 
And if you haven't already seen it, I do think it's worth checking out, whether you do so on the big screen or the small screen. And that's all I have to say about Dune. Till next time, take care.